Hey, hey, welcome back to our Hungry Adventures. Hungry Adventures in Bangkok. Mickey, what is your camera? Mickey, what brand is your motorcycle? Mickey, where are you from? Mickey, where did you learn speak Thai? Mickey, what is your life story? Tell us more about yourself, yeah? These are the most frequently asked questions I received during the existence of this channel. And at the end of 2020, at the end of last year, I promised you guys to create a special video answering the most of these questions, yeah? And now we've reached 60,000, so I think, yeah, I just must create this video. Besides, every time we're doing live stream, uh, new subscribers usually ask the same questions again and again. Mickey, where are you from? Mickey, what, do, what are you doing in Thailand? Mickey, what is your camera? What is your bike? And so on. So I decided to make this video eventually, finally, yeah. So we could turn this page to go to the next page and get to know each other a bit better. Yeah. So as always, if you have got some time and you are ready to waste this time together with me, because in this video there won't be food, I will be answering the most frequently asked question. Let's go. Well, I was born in Soviet Union in 1988, in April, yeah, in a small town called Kaliningrad. It's the western part of Russia, it's European part. Yeah. A couple of years later, Soviet Union has collapsed, but it's completely not my fault. Yeah. And this three years old dude has found himself in, in a country called Russian Federation, or Russia, yeah. A country where people drink vodka for breakfast and have a wild bear as a pet, yeah. That's what people think. So Kaliningrad region is the most western part of the country, but it's not mainland. It's a region separated from the mainland by two other countries, Poland and Lithuania. So if I want to travel to Moscow, for example, I cannot do it by land without crossing two other countries, unless I book a flight, which is pretty complicated. So Kaliningrad used to be Königsberg, an ancient city which was founded more than 860 years ago. And it was part of East Prussia and German Empire, yeah. And it was heavily damaged during the Second World War and eventually annexed by the Soviet Union. Yeah. So the city center of Kaliningrad was completely rebuilt because nothing had left there but ruins, yeah. And now it looks like a pretty modern, slightly European city, yeah, with population about 400,000 people. And I think it's enough for the history lesson for today. Let's go for the next chapter. So I was born in the Soviet Union in a communal apartment, which was the major type of living for most Soviet people. No condos with a gym, no houses with swimming pool, yeah, can you imagine? Just imagine now, a 5-6 rooms apartment with long is as intestine corridor, shared kitchen and shared toilet, and each room belongs to a different family. And let me clarify, each family had its own room. And this room was used as living room, as dining room, as bedroom for the entire family. Kids, children, uh, children, parents, grandparents, yeah, sleeping in the, in the same room. Probably that's why uh, there is an old gag that there was no sex in Soviet Union. Because of thin walls and whole family sleeping around you. And I have an elder brother who is seven years older than me. So me, my brother, my father is my mom used to live in one room yeah that was the time and lucky for me I don't remember much of it but I can only imagine how much time you would have to wait for your turn to use bathroom or kitchen sink wow yeah it's already dark it's I think it's about 6 30 p.m. so I'm looking for some light Luckily. So now you perhaps understand, I wasn't born in a rich and post prosperous family. Yeah. Not with silver spoon in my mouth. I'd rather was born with steel spoon in my mouth. Yeah. With made in USSR written on it. <laughs> my father back in the days used to serve in the military and then worked in the how it's called railway carriage works. Yeah an old German manufactory and then even participated in the Chernobyl disaster liquidation which has happened in 1986 two years before my birthday yeah 
the famous Chernobyl thanks to HBO, HBO series. And still I was lucky to born without superhuman strength, without some X-ray vision and ability to transform into Hulk. Yeah. However, maybe I just gotta check. Wait a second. No, no, no any special abilities. Sorry guys. And my mom used to work in the grocery store, so as you see, just an ordinary Soviet family. Yeah. And post-Soviet era was pretty harsh. Yeah. Skinheads, hooligans, no Instagram. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine? There was a time when there was no Instagram, no internet. And if you got some special task in your school and you need to do your homework, you cannot use Google. Yeah. You need to take a ride by bus or by tram to the local library, then read some an old book, paper book, yeah, find this information and then have a lonely ride back home, even without music in your airports, because you just even didn't have a player, yeah. <laughs> Man. There was an only pleasure, uh, the only entertainment. It, it was called uh, uh, the brick game, a Tetris, it was a game, uh, how it's called, <laughs> game console, yeah, which I, which I got for one of my birthday. Do you remember it? It was fantastic, real pleasure. Anyway, at the age of 15, I really wanted to have a mobile phone because it was only the beginning uh, of the era of mobile phones and it was out of family budget, of course, yeah. So I decided to find a job and I found a job at an old German pulp and pepper meal and I started to work there during summer holidays. Yeah. So this factory, it was the center of all kinds of pollution in the district. Sometimes it was even hard to breathe nearby. Yeah. So the management of this company, they were giving out the triangle uh, packs of milk for the harmful conditions for work. Yeah. However, they didn't mind to hire a teenager. So after three months of working there, at the end of the summer, I bought myself a, a, my first Siemens M55 with polyphonic melodies, with the, yeah, I think color screen and two megabytes of storage. It was phenomenal, guys. I was just happiest guy ever. Oh, lady is saying that I gotta leave. Yeah, it's 7 p.m. Okay, I'll find some other place with light. Just give me a sec. You know how much I love beautiful lights, especially at night. So where did we stop? Ah, about work. So starting from this time, from school, I started to work almost every holidays we had at school, but mostly as a general worker at different building constructions. Yeah, usually with shovel and with bricks in my hands. Eventually I graduated the school with silver medal, yeah, and then entered the social and economic geography and geopolitics faculty of the Russian and economic of the Russian Federal University of Kaliningrad. Then I fell in love again and again, then I fell in love again. Yeah, it's one of my issues. And then I applied for work in the bar of Five Star Hotel and started to learn, started to work this art, this craft, the art of mixing alcohol drinks, the art of drinking without being detected while working. <laughs> yeah. And then, also a couple of years later, after changing a few bars, uh, I even opened a bar together with two of my mates uh, on the seaside, yeah, where I met a friend, my best friend from Russia, yeah, who invited me to travel to St. Petersburg. And I did. I moved to St. Petersburg, where I spent a couple amazing, truly amazing and unforgettable years of my life. And I consider St. Petersburg as my another hometown, yeah. And in St. Petersburg, I signed my first modeling contract. Yeah, it was St. Petersburg. So I started to work as a model and then, after a couple of years, I have realized that uh, I should continue looking for adventure while I'm still young. Yeah, so I've sent hundreds of applications to different modeling agencies around the world, got a number of uh, response, yeah, and picked Thailand. 
You know, Russians, they love Thailand. Maybe they love Thailand more than any other country in the world. Yeah, and it was one of the most crucial decisions I made in my life because it's changed it. So I have sold everything I've got in St. Petersburg, booked a flight and moved to Thailand, to Bangkok. And it was fantastic. It was 2012. And I still remember the, the, that amazing feeling in March of 2012 when I was walking outside of uh, Suvarnabhumi Airport walking in high winter boots in winter jacket while it's plus 35 outside plus 35 degrees outside yeah and i fell in love with thailand completely from the first side yeah the same summer of 2012 i went to koh samui the tropical island the legendary tropical island uh to meet a couple of my buddies yeah where i rented motorcycle motorbike yeah it was honda click and couple couple of weeks later I fell together with motorbike on a rainy, sandy road. Yeah, it was covered with sand. Yeah, almost in front of my house. Yeah, and I broke my ankle. It was double fracture, uh, open fracture. Yeah, my friends pulled me in, into a car, brought me into a hospital. Yeah, and I spent about 10 or 11 days in the hospital, screaming and moaning of pain, because doctors they couldn't put a uh, how it's called a cast on my fracture because I've got open wound and they needed to check uh, They were needed to check if there is infection or not. So they were cleaning every day and I was screaming every day screaming of pain Yeah, and they were giving me morphine again and again and again. Oh, it was horrible And you probably know that Thai hospitals they are pretty expensive. Yeah one of the most expensive things you have in Thailand. Yeah Especially if you are a foreigner, because if you are a foreigner, yeah, you have to pay foreign price. So for these 10 or 11 days, the price was 250k, 250,000 baht, which is more than 8,000 dollars US. And back in this time, even now it's still crazy money. Of course, I didn't have such amount of money, so I spent all my earnings, all my savings, and I borrowed a lot from my friends, yeah, who never left me, even though. I went to a different country and they are still my best friends yeah so i've paid the i've, I've paid this amount <laughs> crazy amount of money for my uh for my leg for the operation for the healthcare. Yeah. and after that i've got three craziest months of my life as i was without money not even like no money for food can you imagine i was eating steamed rice bananas you know these small bananas for 20 baht and the canned fish from 7-eleven and I was drinking water from this uh, water vending machine it was craziest time I spent first two months uh, laying in the bed because uh, obviously I cannot move every time uh, I go to a toilet I have to put my leg down and it was swollen in like in 20-30 seconds <sighs> crazy yeah and then I had a very good contact in a travel company in China and um, they invited me to work in a travel company in China. And I decided, okay, I'm moving as soon as I can walk 100 meters without crutches. Yeah, as soon as I can do it, I move because, yeah, I need to, to walk in the airport somehow. So, as soon as I could make it, I moved to Hainan province of China. So, yeah, I have moved to Hainan, to Hainan province, which is tropical paradise for Chinese and the center of medical tourism for Russian-speaking countries. Acupuncture, different massage, uh, water springs, teas, different snake poisons and so on. Yeah, pretty interesting stuff. Yeah, and of course I couldn't work as a model anymore because I barely could walk. So I started to work in this travel company as a guide in sales, in sales first and then as a guide. Yeah, and uh, Maybe in six months I started to walk again due to this Chinese medicine. Started to walk again and then a couple months more I started even to run and I got skinny again. Can you imagine that? So yeah, Chinese medicine is fantastic. And after 13 months of working uh, in China in this company, I could, I could have paid all my debts, buy a ticket to my home and come to see my family, my friends in Kaliningrad and then to St. Petersburg yeah but spending one one month in russia after spending one month in russia i have realized that i got addicted to southeast asia yeah everything just different 
I miss this culture, I miss this food, I miss this climate. So I booked a flight back, at first to China and then to Pattaya, to Thailand. Yeah. And sometimes later I got an opportunity to work, to sign a contract with uh, a real estate company and start working in uh, sales of property, or in sales of condos, in sales of houses, yeah, as a real estate agent. And then two years more, two years later, I even started handling uh, business development and brand management. It was pretty cool, yeah, pretty good job, completely different specialization, yeah. And I should be rather doing, uh, I should be rather doing these condo tours, yeah, real estate tours, showing you beautiful condominiums and houses around Bangkok rather than food. And I still could do it, yeah, if there will be some interest from you, because some of you guys ask me to do some my condo tour, but I stay in a, I stay in a basic place, but I could do real cool condo tours. If you're interested, if you're interested, please write me in the comments. Yeah, so I was working in this company and then uh, I realized that I'm not really happy of this office life. Yeah, so office life is not really something I want to do. So even though it was interesting career, good career, yeah, well paid, uh, I decided to quit because I didn't have enough free time yeah, and there was a lot of stress because company uh, already was involved in commercial property, in hotel property, so yeah, you just got no time no time to leave. And even though it was a good career, I decided to quit and get back into the modeling, but already with focus on acting. So I've started to learn, I've started to study in practice and eventually have become a professional commercial actor. And now you can see my commercials for a number of brands. Uh, Electrolux, Kia, Samsung, Oppo, uh, Leg Beer, uh, Smooth E, what else, San Pellegrino Water, uh, Nestle and so on, a number of brands, and I participated in the project internationally. You can see this work in Australia, in Singapore, in Thailand, in Philippines, in China, in Germany, in Poland and so on, in many countries. And one of the reasons why I decided to stay in Bangkok, yeah, despite its air pollution and so on, because Bangkok is the center of cinematography, it's, let's say, cinematography hub of Southeast Asia. Yeah, with pretty high uh, production volume. And besides, from here, from Bangkok, I can instantly get anywhere in the world, yeah, because there is a huge airport and lots of transportation. And then come back to Thailand and enjoy, and, and, and enjoy my living here again. Yeah, so it's pretty convenient. I can say that I'm extremely successful in this field, yeah, because the competition is just crazy. It's so high, yeah, so you... I don't know, there are numbers of people who, who become famous and rich and they are like incredible celebrities now, mostly actors, of course, yeah. I mean, like for different uh, drama actors and so on. Yeah, but it's really interesting things to do, thing to do. And it was interesting until uh, 2020 when we all know that pandemic has happened, yeah. So there are no more shootings, there are no more new projects, no flights no any productions, all marketing budgets are cut in half, in, in quarters. Yeah, so that's why I have unpacked my camera, because I started this channel a couple years ago, and it was just a hobby. I just uploaded one video a month, two video a month, from my some trips, from with my some lifestyle uh, advices and so on, and decided to turn this channel into something bigger, yeah, just to, to, to keep my head above the water. And after the first wave, after the first lockdown, yeah, as soon as lockdown was cancelled in 2020, I decided to put all my time and a lot of effort and a lot of energy into turning this channel into something bigger, to, to make this channel to live, yeah. And that's how Hungry Adventure began. You probably remember all of these market hunts, yeah. And I started to upload, to create and upload videos daily, and I did during four months. Yeah, I visited about 100 markets around Bangkok. It was insane. Yeah, and since some time you, you've joined this channel and, and it's pretty cool. And I really hope that it will continue the growth. I will continue to create cool videos and in better, better, better videos with every stage. Yeah, because just starting from recently, this channel started to, be, started to bring 
even tiny, tiny, tiny bit of money because, yeah, on monetization you can make a lot of money. But I'm really grateful for everyone who has joined me on Patreon because Patreon is a great support for every creator. And I'm really grateful for everyone who, who decided to, uh, to do donations yeah, through PayPal, to a donation link that I post in every video. Yeah, because uh, it really helps when I'm doing the trips. Especially, guys, thank you for all of this New Year, for your New Year help, yeah. Because with your help, I'm, I'm creating these videos. All, let's say, all, only with your help. Okay, and one of the major questions, Mickey, what camera do you use? Guys, there is no ideal budget camera, no ideal travel camera, no ideal camera at all. There are cameras that fit some requirements, cameras able to solve some tasks, so you really need to understand what are you buying and why, and what is the main concept of the videos you want to shoot. Because I've come out of the commercial video production, and for me the quality of picture, the depth of field, the low light abilities are very important. Yeah. So I feel I, sh I use a professional Sony camera Alpha Mark III with two lenses. Uh, 20mm f2.0 uh, and 14mm f2.8 yeah Sony and uh, some young lenses prime lenses both also microphone Rode Video Mic Pro and gimbal stabil 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 stabilizer yeah Zhiyun Weibo S it's pretty heavy gimbal yeah and sometimes I want just to film with my uh, action camera yeah GoPro Hero 8 Black, which I mostly use for uh, filming bike shots, yeah, because I can uh, mount it on my chest. Because it's light, because it's small, and if you use ND filter, yeah, and if you uh, know how to use settings, you can get pretty decent uh, quality of footage, especially in, in a good light. Yeah. Also just add some, some, some magic in Adobe Premiere, of course, yeah. But yeah, it, it's really... Uh, depends on your skills and really depends on your ideas and if you film in daylight you can film with 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 just phone This is Samsung S9 plus which is already like two years old or even more it can film 4k Which okay, of course 4k from phone and 4k fr from uh, camera is not the same because in the phone There is sensor like small small sensor and the full-frame camera smell so sensor is much bigger It receives much more light. That's why its picture is different yeah, but if you are filming in daylight, sometimes it's even hard to find a difference. So yeah, I've done a couple of videos with phone, only with phone, and I'm still pretty excited about the quality of them. So you can start your YouTube channel even with the phone, yeah, and even if it's not the latest model, because there are there is a number of channels, there are a number of channel successful channels on YouTube who film entire video on phone. So yeah, guys. Camera doesn't really matter. Your personality and your story matters. Yeah, be yourself, be real. Try not to be asshole well <laughs> as much as it is possible. And just film your story. Tell your story to the people. Okay. And about my motorcycle. Guys, I'm really sorry, but... I didn't expect this video will be so long, that's why I've come to a uh, roti shop and ordered two roti martaban with chicken because I feel incredibly hungry. Yeah, and this video is so long, so yeah, I need some energy to continue talking to tell you about the motorcycle. So, my motorcycle, it's a type brand, yeah, it's called uh, Stellion Centaur 250 Max. Obviously, the engine is 250cc. The fuel tank is about 13 liters. Yeah, it's not fast because the original, the default model, uh, the maximum speed is about 90, 85 kilometers per hour. Yeah, with this engine. While now, after all of my modification, the maximum speed is about 140 kilometers per hour. However, personally, I never drive faster than 110, just because I think it wasn't designed to drive fast. It's beautiful and you can enjoy the ride. Instead of seeing tunnel, you can enjoy the surroundings. So yeah, I bought it in Chiang Mai from a guy who has ridden about less than thousand kilometers, if I remember right. Yeah, and back in the okay. days, the price for the new bike of this model was about seventy-five thousand. But 
uh, from a dealer, I mean new new one from the shop. What is seventy five thousand? It's uh, oh, two thousand two and a half thousand dollars US. Yeah. So it was deli delivered to Bangkok from Chiang Mai by truck, and only in Bangkok I started to realize how many issues and how many flaws this bike, this model has got. Yeah. And then several months later, I parked this motorcycle in front of. Lad Pro MRT in Bangkok overnight and then in the morning I've come to pick it up and, re and, and noticed and discovered that some bad people uh, have stolen exhaust pipe from the bike and ripped off uh, the logos from the fuel tank I was so pissed, I was so mad at myself of my silly idea to park my bike in, in public place here in front of MRT station Anyway, that was the cause why I went to the custom service shop and instead of replacing exhaust pipe and fixing the, the color, I decided to, to invest more and improve, not, and, and not just uh, decorate it, but improve the performance, yeah, to do work with engine, uh, change tires, do work uh, with uh, suspension, change handlebar, change brake system, change clutch change electronics I mean change a lot of things the total value was about about a half the total value of investment was about a half of the purchase price yeah but eventually it just has become completely different bike yeah reliable strong and then we started to travel for a thousand kilometers together T together with you by the way yeah so it's not that fast, yeah, it's not a touring bike, however, with fuel tank of 13 liters I can ride about 350 kilometers, so it's approximately 3.3 3, 3 .3 liters for 100 kilometers, that's why I don't need to worry about gasoline, that's why I've never worried about gasoline while riding this Mehong Son Lu, because, uh, because it's just like that, yeah, I don't need it doesn't require much oil, it doesn't eat too much, yeah. but I do, I do, I eat more than him. So that's the bald bike. Oh god, this food is beautiful. Man, I love halal food so much. Check out the side of the portion. Well, another major question, Miki, why do you speak Thai? Where did you learn to speak Thai? The, the answer is pretty easy. I went to a language school, Thai language school, and I really tried hard to memorize, to practice, to learn again and again. There were students who didn't learn shit, let's say, who didn't improve their skills at all, because it really depends on you personally, on your devotion, on your willingness to learn. So it's, it doesn't really matter what school did you choose, what school to pick. It all depends on you. Of course, my Thai friends helped me a lot to learn new words, to practice, to uh, to understand some some tiny things because Thai language consists of many unusual moments, consonant words, and so on. Yeah, so it really depends on your willingness to learn and to study. Yeah. Besides, I went to market almost every day. I practice. I, I talk, I'm trying to talk with Thai people every day, so it's really great help because it's, it's brutal real conditions of learning Thai on the streets, yeah. Of course, having Thai girlfriend is another way, another method to learn Thai, but will she really want to teach you every day, like really teach you hard, come on, just try, just try to combine all these methods. Another major, major question, mostly from Thai audience. Miki, have you ever been to Take Me Out Thailand? Yes, the answer is yes. I went to this TV show. It's like dating TV show when you are standing alone on a stage with uh, lots of extras screaming like, I don't know, <laughs> like crazies. And uh, there are 30 girls standing in front of you and they're choosing you and you're choosing them. So you are telling about your life, you are telling about your talents. Uh, about what can you do and, and so on kind of funny guy your hobby and, and blah 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 <laughs> 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 
Wow. I feel so excited. Oh, what do you think about? My heart, I think, is going to jump out. Really? Oh. Yeah, you can feel it. So exciting. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Ding, ding. Maybe I need doctor. Ding, ding. Oh, uh, I can help you by mouth to mouth. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I will add the link in the description of this video in case you want to see the full um, episode because it's like 40 or 50 minutes. Yeah. So yeah, I went to this show two years ago. It was pretty fun, it was pretty cool. The producer has invited me and uh, my date was a stunning girl. Yeah, her name is Nana, she's a good DJ. Yeah, and as a good DJ, she's got a night lifestyle and I've got the day, li day, day, day lifestyle, yeah. And she used to live in Pattaya, I live in Bangkok, so we just couldn't meet. And unfortunately, we've never met after this show. So please don't, don't ask, uh, is it true or not true? Just, I don't know about everyone, just we didn't, didn't meet at all. I know that she's got a new boyfriend and I'm very happy for her. Yeah, but yeah, she's a stunning girl. It's true, it's true, yeah. Okay, okay. It's a TV show anyway, it's a TV show, so don't expect that everything is gonna turn serious here. Okay guys, and the last question for today. Nikki, why do you love Thailand? I'm not going to tell you anything new, because Thai people are unique with their kindness, with their friendliness. It's probably the only nation in the world with such mindset. I don't know any other country, yeah? And even when I fly back home to Russia, as a grumpy Russian myself, when I come back home, I notice that I smile to other people and, and people look at me and think I'm crazy because I'm smiling. Hey man, why are you smiling to me? Are you crazy? Are you sick? What's wrong with you? Because when you are living here, you adjust yourself. You start smiling, you start being positive. Yeah, trying to find, to, to find positive things in your life. Of course, there are so many uh, bad sides too. Air pollution, crazy traffic jams, yeah, flooding during rainy season. Of course, it's like in any other country, but life taught me to focus on positive sides. Otherwise, you just can't get yourself out of this negative hole. It's just impossible. Yeah. So, so yeah, you're adjusting. You're becoming to be local after years of living here. Because in common, it's about, yeah, I arrived 2012, but I've traveled back and forth, back and forth. It's about seven years of permanent being here. So yeah, I'm not just like a, a traveler, not just like a tourist anymore. I understand a lot about, about uh, this country and um, why do you focus on bad, bad things? Is it, make, is it something that makes you happy? Is it something that makes you smile the next day? Russian people usually don't smile when you travel to Russia. They are kind of, they keep their emotions inside. But here, yeah, in, Instead of, be, instead of being grumpy Russian, I've become this friendly and, lo and, and funny, friendly person. Of course, I still can be uh, grumpy, aggressive, moody, impulsive sometimes. Anyway, I'm just a human being. Russian human being, come on. So yeah, besides, of course, uh, beautiful nature, amazing waterfalls, uh, caves, islands and so on amazing delicious food affordable and tasty fruits lots of transportation yeah one of the most cheapest taxis in the in the world of course i'm not talking about phuket taxi because phuket taxi fares they are just like i don't know like moon flight rates or something you can spend ten thousand baht for one trip by by phuket, phuket taxi yeah but here yeah, lots of positive sides so you just cannot to not love Thailand. Man, you're a zombie or what? If there is a heart beating, if there is a pulse in your veins, so yeah, you gotta love Thailand. Okay, I think I've done my huge confession to you and I wanna thank you for your time. I'm sorry if it was a bit boring, I'm sorry if I was confused sometimes because that was a lot, a, a lot to say. And I really hope you have enjoyed this confession, yeah? <laughs> Hopefully it helped you to understand why I'm doing these things and why I am like that. 
because obviously I'm not not smiling every day and I'm not waking up like oh yeah in the morning I'm grumpy just like any other dude a hungry hungry dude who doesn't want to wake up so hopefully you have enjoyed hit the like button share this video with your friends write me a comment I really love to read your comments guys I read all of your comments sometimes I can reply everyone but I read all stuff you're writing to me and I'm really gl glad this community is growing so fast and we are so friendly and kind to each other so yeah let's continue let's keep this channel grow let's keep this channel growing and I'll see you in the next video pretty soon maybe even this weekend yeah okay bye bye